good morning students and welcome back to the session in today's session we will be discussing briefly about electromagnetic induction about which we had uh, discussed in full detail in our previous class and we will study today how this phenomena of electromagnetic induction is employed in the generation of electricity on a large scale using ac generator we have studied that electromagnetic induction is the phenomenon of the production of an induced current in a coil placed in a region where the magnetic field changes with time i told you that an english physicist michael faraday thought that what would happen if a conductor is moved inside a magnetic field or a magnetic field is continuously changed around a fixed conductor faraday was having an opinion that in such cases a potential difference should be set up between the ends of the conductor and consequently a current should be established with the same faraday performed a series of experiments and finally discovered the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction we had discussed that using a setup like this he was able to prove that when there is a relative motion between the magnet and a coil an induced emf is set up due to which a current is flowing through the coil and that current is detected with the help of the galvanometer now based upon the experiment he was able to conclude that motion of a magnet with respect to a coil produces the induced potential difference across its ends and as a result the induced current is set up in the circuit so what is the reason behind it when the magnet is brought nearer to the coil or taken away from the coil the magnetic field around the coil changes this increase or decrease in magnetic field is resulting in the induced potential difference across the ends of the coil and consequently an induced current is set up in the circuit but what happens when the magnet is stationary when the magnet is uh, stationary relative to the coil the magnetic field around the coil is constant as there is no change in magnetic field around the coil no potential difference is set up across the coil and hence no induced current flows to the circuit so he was able to conclude that the magnitude of the induced current depends on three factors that is the strength of the magnet the number of turns in the coil and the speed of movement of the magnet he also conducted another experiment where he was able to generate electric current in a coil due to change in current in a neighboring coil that was electromagnetic induction using two separate coils the direction of induced current was obtained using fleming's right hand rule as per fleming's right hand rule if we stretch the thumb four finger and central finger of our right hand so that they are mutually perpendicular to each other if the four finger indicates the direction of the magnetic field and the thumb points the direction of motion of a conductor then the central finger will show the direction of induced current in the conductor so we had discussed all these things in our previous class i had also told you that production of electricity production of electrical energy with the help of this method is in accordance with law of conservation of energy that was proved by sir emil lenz and in his famous law that is known by lenz's law he was able to prove that the work done in bringing the magnet closer to the coil or taken away that work done is actually getting converted to energy so production of electrical energy with the phenomena of electromagnetic induction is very much in accordance to the law of conservation of energy so now we will switch over to the topic of discussion for today that is electrical generators what is an electric generator an electric generator is a device which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy The electric generator is the most commonly used machine to produce large currents for use in our homes and in industry. You can see the basic setup of an electric generator. In this picture you can see the way once the coil starts rotating 
you can see the axis of rotation based upon the manner in which the coil is rotating in the magnetic field how the magnetic flux is undergoing a change and how it is resulting in the production of an induced EMF. This is actually the basic setup of a generator. Now the diagram that you commonly find in your textbooks, this is a conceptual diagram that makes us it is convenient for us to study the different parts of an AC generator, but actually the AC generator looks somewhat like this and all the important parts has been uh, shown. If we further separate out the parts, it will look somewhat like this. But and this is uh, not uh, going to be the topic of discussion for today because this is beyond the scope of our syllabus. We will restrict ourselves to the conceptual diagram. Now we will begin with the working principle. What is the principle of an electric generator? The strong magnetic field is produced by a current flow through the field coil of the rotor. The field coil in the rotor receives excitation through the use of slip rings and brushes. Two brushes are spring held in contact with the slip rings to provide the continuous connection between the field coil and external circuit. The armature is contained within the windings of the stator and is connected to the output. Each time the rotor makes one complete revolution, one complete cycle of AC is developed. Now, depending upon the important parts of the AC generator, every single part plays a very dominant role in the generation of the induced EMF and thereby the induced current. So, what exactly is the principle behind which the AC generator is working? That we need to understand first of all and then one by one we can get into the construction. So, the principle on which it functions, an electric generator is based on the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction. In the electric generator, mechanical energy is used to rotate a coil in a magnetic field to produce electricity and the direction of induced current is given by Fleming's right hand rule. Now, the expression for the induced EMF is something that is not in the syllabus for class 10, but still I have like I would like to include it in today's discussion because that will help you to have a clear analysis of how exactly the flux is changing and how the magnitude of induced EMF is obtained. So, you can see let position of the coil at any time t, it is making an angle theta with the vertical. If omega is uniform angular speed of the coil, then theta is equal to omega t, b is the strength of the magnetic field, n be the number of turns on the coil and a the area of the coil. The magnetic flux is given by this expression. Thereafter, using these steps, these steps are differentiation. It is an important branch of mathematics about which you will be studying in class 11. So, I am not going into the basic details, but you can just understand the final expression given by the maximum value of EMF that is E is equal to E0 sin omega t. So, you can understand that the alternating current is having a sinusoidal wave. So, we always represent alternating current with a sinusoidal wave because you can see in the expression itself we are getting a sign function and uh, as you have already studied about sign function in trigonometry, so you are quite well aware about the trigonometrical function and how sign function can be represented graphically. So, shortly you will be seeing how that induced EMF is showing a variation with respect to time. And since it is varying periodically with respect to time as the coil is rotating, so it is getting the name of alternating. It is alternating with respect to magnitude as well as direction. So, this is going to be the expression for the EMF that is instantaneous EMF in an AC generator is given by E equal to E0 sin omega t where E0 is the maximum value. We know that sine function maximum value is going to be 1. So, obviously the maximum value for EMF E is equal to E. 0. Again, I will show you the basic circuit diagram because I want to discuss the important parts the construction. First, the coil. An electric generator consists of a rotating rectangular coil ABCD, which is having a large number of turns of copper bound over a soft iron core and is called the armature. 
it is given the name of armature the soft iron core is used to increase the magnetic flux second the magnetic field the magnetic field is it is usually a permanent sponge magnet having concave poles the armature is rotated of a magnet so that axis of armature is perpendicular to magnetic field lines the third part slip rings slip rings are the magnetic rings which are connected in the terminal of the armature as you can see in the picture i am just zooming the picture a little bit so that it becomes clear to you all you can see the slip rings you can see all the parts actually there is a permanent magnet there is a coil the slip rings that rotate along with the coil the shaft and the carbon brushes b1 and b2 so all these parts you can see very very clearly in this diagram now brushes the brushes b1 and b2 are just touching the slip rings they are not rotating with the coil and these brushes leads to the output of load resistance the load resistance is observed with the help of the galvanometer whenever current is induced in the coil that coil will flow through the external circuit and there will be some deflection in the galvanometer this deflection in the galvanometer will indicate that a current is flowing and whether it is alternating or not that will be clearly understood based upon the direction in, in which the pointer of the galvanometer is deflecting obviously we will find that in one case it will be deflecting on one side and in the other after a certain time it will be deflecting on the other side now you can see the shaft the axle is mechanically rotated from outside so as to rotate the coil inside the magnetic field now the working let the axle attached to the slip rings be rotated so that the arm ab of the coil moves up and the arm cd moves down that is the coil rotates clockwise in this arrangement in accordance with fleming's right hand rule induced current in these arms flow along the direction ab and cd in the direction that is in the direction a b c and d it means that the current in the external circuit flows from b2 to b1 b2 to b1 if instead of a single loop abcd we take a coil having large number of turns of insulated copper wire the current generated in each turn adds up to give a large current in the coil after one half rotation of the coil abcd the arm ab starts moving down and arm cd moving up as a result the induced current produced in the coil in accordance with fleming's right hand rule flows in the direction dcba accordingly in the external circuit current flows from b1 to b2 it means that after every half rotation the direction of current in the external circuit changes that is the current produced is an alternating current therefore such a generator is called an ac generator there are several applications of an ac generator that you can see in the picture that is right now coming on your screen all of our household appliances run on ac current example refrigerator washing machine oven lights fan ac generator alternator is used to produce ac voltages for transmission via the grid system locally as portable generators so there are several applications of ac generator so let us briefly go through the topic all over again so that we can have a better understanding of what exactly an ac generator is what are its important parts and how it functions to create current so you can see that an ac generator mechanical energy is getting converted to electrical energy and what is the basic setup so very quickly getting into the working principle of an ac generator 
we know that an AC generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. So whenever there is a relative motion between a magnet and a coil, an electric current or EMF is induced in the coil that is well detected with the help of the galvanometer. As you can see the magnet is moving, there is some deflection recorded by the galvanometer. Coming to the important parts, one by one we can see the first part being the armature which consists of several turns of insulated copper wire. It is marked A, B, C, D. There is a shaft which is used to rotate the coil inside the magnetic field. These are the field magnets providing the magnetic field. They are having concave shapes. These are the slip rings marked S1 and S2 connected to the armature which rotate along with the coil and then the brushes B1 and B2 which lightly press against the slip rings. Now the induced EMF or the load is recorded by the galvanometer. The deflection in the galvanometer will let us know whether current is being generated or not. Let us understand the working. As the armature starts rotating inside the magnetic field, then magnetic flux linked with the armature goes on changing and accordingly this results in an induced EMF as per Faraday's law. Now you can see that the deflection recorded by the galvanometer is on both the sides which shows that the current is changing its direction periodically. That's why the name alternating current. Now how to find the direction of induced current? So when the coil starts rotating, the direction of the induced current will be changing periodically. You can see how the flux linked with the coil is changing as the coil starts rotating. So with the help of Fleming's right hand rule, we can very easily find out what should be the direction of current flowing through the coil. So right now, depending upon the direction in which the coil is rotating, you can see the direction of induced current. Again with the help of Fleming's right hand rule, we can figure out the direction of induced current. After a while, once the coil has completed rotation, you can see the direction of current is from B2 to B1. And it is recorded by the galvanometer. So if you want to graphically represent the induced EMF, as I was telling you a couple of times before, that the maximum value of the induced EMF is given by E equal to E0 sin omega t. It is a sinusoidal function. So obviously the graphical function will also prove the same thing. But if we are recording the values of the current produced at different instants of time, for example at t equal to 0 seconds, t equal to t by 4, 3 t by 4, t by 2, Depending upon the value of the induced EMF, if we keep on plotting the values somewhat like this, you can see on one axis we have plotted the time t by 4, t by 2, 3 t by 4 and t, t that is the total time. So you can see in this manner we can obtain the graphical representation. You can see in this manner, this would be the graphical representation of the current. So again coming back to the applications, we have studied that there are so many applications of AC generator and very quickly we have been able to see how current can be induced with the help of an AC generator. Thank you.